I'd like to start off, uh, you can like take it as a rhetorical question or um, if you'd like to share your opinion on like the chat, I'd be happy to see them. Uh, and my question is a bit simple, uh, but like I, I really want to know, uh, have any of you actually heard, have heard of uh, contemporary dance companies that are based in the Arab world because um, as someone who is um, actually a dancer and who is humbly quite familiar with the field, um, it wasn't until recently that I started seeing uh, this type of uh, that, that type of companies in the Arab world, uh, even growing up, or if I wanted to look for inspiration, I would always find companies which are like great and amazing, but they were always based abroad, like the Netherlands Dance Theater. There's one called uh, Orsellino in Italy, and uh, I would find some in Spain, but finding some uh, a company that's in, that's based in the MENA region was, uh, was really hard uh, and even like the way I stumbled upon Sima Dance Company uh, was through uh, a mentor of mine because she had taught me dance for several years so uh, and, I, and she used to previously dance with Sima so this is where I was kind of introduced to them uh, so I was really inspired uh, and very happy to see that that type of dance um, is, is being taken care of, if you might say, in the Arab world, and it's not non-existent, uh, which is why I chose um, Sima Dance Company, because it was one of the first that I first got to know to. Uh, and the, my forward today will be about uh, explaining a bit, if you'd like, one of their performances, which is called Ansaf. But um, I will be going like a bit back and forth a bit uh, before getting into my actual forward, before actually talking about Ansaf. I'm going to be um, talking about a bit uh, about Sima uh, in general, and then I will go into my actual topic. So uh, to start, uh, Sima Dance Company, is one of uh, very uh, very famous dance groups in the Arab world. It was originally uh, very, or it started being on the international uh, scale when they won Arabs Got Talent in 2014. Uh, and this is where their opportunities uh, started to emerge more and more and where they started, uh, started to become more known. Uh, the company uh, hosts a lot of uh, diverse, uh, uh, it's very culturally diverse. Uh, they host uh, dancers that range from about to 25 to 40. Uh, they don't obviously, uh, they're not all portrayed in each of their performances, but that's uh, uh, how estimated their community is. Uh, their dances, their dancers range from all over the world. Uh, they have dances from Spain, from the UK, uh, from Syria, from Lebanon, and so on. Uh, now, where are the training grounds for Sima Dance Company? Uh, Sima Performing Arts. So I get it might be like a bit confusing, like Sima Performing Arts and Sima Dance Company. So like, what's the difference? Uh, basically, Sima Performing Arts is the venue where, uh, or like the big studio where the, the, the dance company trains. Uh, and Sima Performing Arts also, uh, on top of being the, uh, the place for rehearsals, it's also uh, hosts a lot of uh, classes for beginners or intermediate levels uh, for people who are just interested in taking dance classes and they range from ballet from hip-hop from salsa but obviously with a program that is condensed and contemporary uh, and something that I thought was uh, really interesting was where this uh, was where Sima Performing Arts was based. It's now based in the UAE in Dubai. More specifically, uh, it's based in an avenue called Al Sirkal. And uh, I might be like going a bit off topic, but I thought it was interesting to share is that Al Sirkal Avenue is actually uh, a very vibrant hub of community uh, and a lot of art artists and it houses uh, residencies for uh, global and local artists and this is not just for performing arts they have um, I've inserted some here that are available in the avenue 
some of them are uh, designers, some of them are ceramic artists, uh, light designers, um, galleries, and so on. So it really, I think it really embodies uh, uh, like Sima's image or Sima's brand. Uh, just to give a bit of background, uh, I said that the company is now based in Dubai, but originally it was founded in Damascus uh, in 2003 by Ala Krimat, who is a Palestinian, but he has lived his whole life in Syria. Uh, due to the uprisings of 2011 uh, in Syria, they had to relocate to, uh, they had actually to flee uh, from Syria to Lebanon, and they did a few small performances here um, and in 2014 after they won Arab Scott Talent they got uh, they were able to relocate to uh, Dubai so they have really been a lot uh, it wasn't like an easy journey from the way they were able to like go on the international scene uh, something I would like to say about contemporary dance is that it's a very um, abstract language. It's not, uh, for example, like ballet. Ballet has like this, uh, for those who don't know, it's, uh, there's a very strict set of rules. Uh, your legs has to be straight, uh, your postures have to be like lifted, uh, your toes have to be uh, pointed. Uh, the same goes with hip hop. You have to have like that sort of uh, baggy style. Uh, when it comes to contemporary, um, it's really uh, borderless. There is really, uh, you can like base a whole performance off, off of uh, one concept or one word, which is basically what uh, some of their performances are. Um, like minutes and puzzle are some of uh, their uh, performances. And they, um, the, the founder, Ala, always tries to connect it back to uh, exploring conflicts uh, or exploring certain concepts uh, of, of connecting back to our lands, to, to, his, uh, to our roots and to our origins. Uh, Puzzle, for example, uh, talks about the lives of Syrian youth. Uh, youth I'm sorry. Um, it talks about their resilience. It talks about uh, their patience throughout the years and how they continue to uh, really um, like do their best in in midst of all the chaos that's happening. Uh, and finally, we come to our spotlight for today. Uh, I'm going to talk about one of their performances, Ansaf. Um, it was performed in the Arts and Center of NYU Abu Dhabi. Um, and it talks about, uh, you can actually see from the citation here, um, beware of average people. Uh, it talks about the takeover of the average people in major aspects of life. Um, and it basically um, talks about, or uh, in, in big, uh, it talks about how today's most powerful organizations um, try one way or another uh, by uh, to or aim to have uh, today's subjects think and express themselves and have all the same desires or um, or their way of thinking uh, always complies under uh, like the normal standards of average of normal uh, and uh, for for the choreographer who is Ala and the founder, um, this meant being um, a half. So Ansaf, for those who don't know, in Arabic means a half. So he thought that always complying with average standards means that you are limiting yourself to a box and uh, in that way you stop uh, the progression of humanity and in that way you are incomplete you are a half um, so this is like where the the name started from because a lot of people think that uh, contemporary dance or performances they really just come out of a whim but there's actually like a very very long process of brainstorming uh, to, to be able to create uh, the, the final performance so uh, he was originally inspired by this concept of uh, mediocrity uh, by reading the book of the Canadian philosopher who is called Alain Deneau. And I've listed here the name of the book you read. It's called Mediocrity, the Politics of the Extreme Center. 
And so originally when I saw the name, I was like, okay, I can see how this is applied to the politics or the political arena. Because obviously, uh, if we talk like about the regional conflicts a bit, um, there is there might be like the uh, the tyrant or like the 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 figure who is like always in control and uh, it, 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 is, uh, it puts its power on the people and uh, really has everyone has to abide by certain rules and has to uh, think the same and always like speak the same if we were to get, talk about it in the political context. But I couldn't understand how he could relate it to um, to artists uh, and uh, because like obviously you all know and in, in the arts and culture industry, particularly um, the the field or the ways of thinking are naturally always diverse you can't like uh, you can't make everyone think the same way when it comes to a performance so I, I, I couldn't understand it until I read uh, an article or an interview with him and he said um, and I'm quoting him right now this book breaks down everything we face as artists and he goes on to talk that even artists are being or having to comply by certain standards because uh, when they're hired by a certain company or a certain client, uh, they are always uh, like they're assigned a certain topic or a certain subject and they really can't implement all of their creativity on it uh, or really think outside the box there's like a certain uh, topic to tackle and you can't go behind uh, you can't go outside it so uh, he was saying and uh, in the end artists have to uh, they just want to survive they have to sustain themselves economically so they they are agreeing to take on these sorts of projects where they have to limit themselves because in the end uh, they're valuing um, economic success more than creative integrity uh, and he's saying that this is like setting the uh, the goal for masses to follow for all the new uh, dancers and creators that are coming to do the same which is where we talk about the consumerism mindset uh, and so you can see and like I've uh, some of the pics I have here are from perform or from the performances of Unself so you can see how there's always uh, the the guy in the suit who is sort of the dictator figure and the rest are sort of the masses that are uh, following him blindly because they don't have a choice and uh, sadly I, I couldn't find a clear video of it but um, in, in the, the performance there is electronic music playing at some points and the dancers have portrayed like a sort of shock movements like like you can see in the picture here which sort of creates a dystopian feel and for Allah he thinks that this is where we might be heading if we were to let uh, the, the average or the mediocre uh, control us. Uh, so with that I end my presentation. Um, if you would like to know more about uh, uh, dance companies, I uh, continue on uh, my journey on researching more in the Arab world, but there is one that um, is really interesting and that I have been following for a while. It's called Contemporary uh, Beirut Contemporary Ballet. By the name, obviously, it's based in Beirut. Uh, they have collaborated with a lot of international artists who are very, very interesting. Uh, I've linked here their Instagram account and an article about them uh, and about one of their performances. It's called Just Pass. Um, I can go on and talk more about it, but I think my time is up and maybe I, would, I could do like another Africa presentation talking about uh, their initiative. Thank you so much for listening. It's been uh, a pleasure.